All right, welcome to Stitches and Picks. I'm Dave. I'm Kristen. And this episode, we are going to talk about the inevitability of working on everything except for uh, what you planned on doing when you look to start your own side project or your own. Um, <laughs> it's funny because we were talking about this. We were talking about it as like, would you have to work on other things than what you want to do? Would you could use that in like the flip side of this? It could be that you are working on your side gig stuff when mm -hmm. you really want to be doing something else or it could be that you're having to work at your nine to five job or with your family and you want to be doing your your side gig stuff so mm -hmm. i was thinking about it in both ways and i was like this my last i don't know x amount of days weeks has been having to take care of every single thing that is not my side stuff I've had people ask about my side stuff. I've gotten to have some like random conversations about it. I have gotten to work on it a little bit here and there, but not enough to actually be like fully entrenched in it, loving it, like feeling like I'm making a huge mm -hmm. impact. Yeah, I've I've spent the last two weeks um, troubleshooting tech and um trying to get my computer to do everything that I would like it to do with the huge file sizes that we're dealing with, you know, with video and everything else. And that, you know, things that you don't think of when you're starting stuff out, especially in digital space mm -hmm. of, okay, storage capacity, you know, do I do the hard drives? Do I do the cloud? Well, what if the cloud's just a mirror of my computer hard drive rather than a separate thing? Um, so that's what I've been going through, you know, half a day text chatting and phone calling with Apple and there That's was a, a bug on their end. And then there was a whole bunch of cleanup on my side. So, um, you know, some of that memory storage stuff is definitely just, you know, bad habits that, uh, you know, the, the paper cuts added up over time <laughs> until I actually, it was like, like, okay, I have to deal with it. But yeah. I dealt with that a lot with my photography business. Like I had all these huge, massive raw files and I ended up getting like a terabyte external hard drive back when a terabyte was like <laughs> really expensive. Mm -hmm. And I still ended up losing a bunch of stuff because I wasn't on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like missing some of my personal photos too. So it's funny that it's like such a mundane task that I like loathe doing, but maintaining files and is so important. It's ridiculous how important it is. Mm -hmm. That was the big thing when I was doing the music production for school. And then, you know, after school with my own records and, you know, band demos and stuff of just having naming conventions and having folders oh, structured in a certain way and um, getting oh. that thing set up so that you can actually remember where you are at any given time. <laughs> I mean, during my day job, uh, I work with a lot of people who are constantly working on naming conventions, but I haven't had to do like that manual labor of like copy paste or like in Photoshop batching things, man, those were batching in Photoshop was probably my savior. I, well, it's only worse. Not... It's only worse now with how automated some of the stuff that Photoshop has you know, mm. some of the features where. If your your data plan isn't on point, you're gonna get a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, orange instead of what you want it to be. Um, you know, I'm by no means a Photoshop expert. I know enough to be dangerous, but uh, reading through some of their feature lists of uh, you know recent updates, like whoa, this could be really cool. But also, you know, when you get turnkey automation on on creative projects like that. Yeah. You're going to be asking for some trouble. You have to actually know what it is too. Well, it's so interesting that they're cloud-based now too. Before mm -hmm. it was I literally like I had a CD that I had to load on to my computer and it lived on premise on my computer. And like, yeah. And like now, now it's so different. And now Canva is like this amazing tool that's completely free that does mm -hmm. so much of what you need. Like, I think we've talked about this before and I'm like, I should probably buy stock in Canva. That's how much I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and this we're by no means paid to to say it i nope. cannot cannot do what i do with 
uh, BGO or even you know, stitches here um, without without Canva. Um, mm -hmm. Even the free version of the tool is amazing. So if you're in need of a good tool to help you out, go check that out. C A N V A uh, dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Recommendation of the week. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you obviously had physical limitations to what you could put your time and effort behind because of it specifically being technology that was holding you back. Mm. How do you, like, other than just having to push through it, like, what was keeping your motivation up? What was keeping you and not just throwing it aside and, like, walking away from it for weeks on end? <laughs> there was definitely some of that. Um, not... Not, you know, weeks on end, but, um, yeah, um, the, the thing for me is that it was a reminder of the things that I actually want to do mm. and that I enjoy doing, um, are on the other side of whatever this problem is. So like, you can't have the good without the bad kind of thing, like in life, the roller. That's always my perspective, on. but you know, that seems like a different episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably you know what um, i thought like i could definitely do a full episode on it too mm -hmm. yeah we should probably have some guest expert in for for that conversation mm, um but i think that it i have enough experience especially with you know recording guitars and the mm. music production thing of it didn't save the right version and i have to redo all the work or so you know, your expectations were in line with kind of what you were experiencing to some extent. So like, it wasn't like you were suddenly like this, because this is, and I bring this up because like, I think when I first started my photography business, um, I didn't have anything to compare to. And I had no mentors and nobody to talk to about it and be like, it would completely throw me off if my files were deleted or if things were just like completely not what I thought they were. And that would actually take huge mental toll on me, which then would come out my work and I wouldn't be working more. So you're saying like, you kind of had some history with that, that helped. Yeah. I mean, when, when you're, uh, you know, five, one surround sound homework project is due the next day and it's four in the morning and you're in the studio already and the files go away and you're like, Oh no, I have six hours to rebuild, you know, three months. Um, you don't want to repeat that. Terrific. You don't want to repeat that ever again. <laughs> you know, I think I would hope as I've gotten older, you know, versus my teenage self, I get less mad at myself about mm. those things as I used to. Um, Same. It, it's less catastrophic now. Yeah, same. Um, but I would still uh, curse out the wall and go for a walk is essentially my immediate process uh, whenever catastrophic so you have coping skills. Happen. So you, so proper expectations based on historical events, mm -hmm. acceptance and or coping skills. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I'm trying to frame it up in like a really healthy way that people might be able to be like, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm cause I'm trying to think of like, I literally am thinking about the younger version of me doing my photography business. Why do I feel like I wasn't successful in that? I think it was a lot of these types of things where like it was everything. It wasn't just this, but this was piece of, a piece of it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the, and the other thing too, is when you're dealing with the, audio files or especially video files they're so large mm. and they require so much memory that you, you kind of have to gear up for it so like my choice of laptop is not the bottom level right so that i can be able to do some of this stuff um you know but if i went out and bought the 300 dollars acer would I be doing 4K video production on that? Absolutely not, because the thing would, you know, blow up and start the kitchen table on fire. Right. Like, <laughs> um, so, like, there's that aspect to it. But then, um, 
you know, when we, when you hear people talk about, oh, do what you like, mm. what you feel you're compelled to do. I feel like these moments are when that actually shows up because if you really are into doing something, you're willing to have a bad gig right. or you're willing to put up with you know, a really crappy situation because you know the flip side of it and you know that you like the work, you enjoy the, the journey of it and not just the, you know, the end result. Well, that's the grit behind it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think when you said that, I literally think of, uh, I don't know who she, I forget her name, but Barbara from Shark Tank. And she's like, do what you're good at, do what you like to do, and then outsource everything else. Mm. I think that's a super privileged way to look at it. I don't disagree, but I think you and I have even talked about this. Like, that is a stage that we can get to eventually. That is right. not where we're sitting currently. We are doing everything ourselves. It makes financial sense for us. It makes sense for us to understand fully what we need to do in order to get to that stage so that we can get the right people in the door, if you will, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so it's super privileged to just be like, hire out, hire out. Yes, there's a time and point that it is completely appropriate. And if you do know and you do have the resources, cool. But there are a lot of people who don't even know what they're going to need. So they're going to have to live through it themselves. And this is the unpretty, unfun gritty part about building the side thing well and i think the other part of that too is that is absolutely good advice when you're there for it you know to your point yeah. but then that also just glances over all of the work that it takes to get to a point to where mm -hmm. you can hand something off yeah you know like if you're going to hand off blog writing or you know seo work or something you should have some sort of these are my expectations yes agency freelancer whatever can you meet these is this reasonable and they'll say yes or no and if right. nobody wants to work with you your expectations are probably unreasonable so you know go that's revisit that but that's yeah. all a process right so you have yes. to say that outsourcing this is the top priority because it might not be when you're you know, stuck in video production mode and you need to get three videos out the door you probably won't have time for that because you're you know your resources are are elsewhere so you know you have to stop doing one thing to do another and depending yeah. on where your situation is and and what else is going on in your life you may or may not be able to do that even though it would be probably the best the best way to move forward i know i'm looking at the projects that I have. And I'm a me as I'm doing it, I'm like, I can't wait to pass this off. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, Mark, you've got them all like listed out. You're like, and this one's going to go away someday. Mm -hmm. This one's going to go away someday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These two things could be done by a single person. This thing could be done by this other person. I'll probably need, you know, that so could like be a whole like subsector to another conversation about like <laughs> scaling that we'll need to have in the future at some point too. Mm -hmm. Um, but for okay, so for me, I have been doing things for life for like my maintaining my daily life, not even for and I've been doing my obviously my my full time job as well, and that has been more lately than than it normally is, which we have times of years that are just busier. So like it's funny because like when I'm doing my my day job, I'm not thinking about the side gig stuff. And then I get focused on the kiddo and I got to make sure she's okay. Right. Like we've been going through even more teething because there are so many teeth. I know that I've said this so many times, like we're always in teething, but like literally the first two years are all teething. It's just insane. Um, and then also just trying to have a life and connection to my spouse and then have some fun outside while I can because the weather and stuff. So like. Well, I think we talked about this in a different a different episode um i forget which one like the balance well life balance. no of how even your your environment dictates certain yeah certain things like if you're going to create a content calendar well if you're in the northern hemisphere you should probably set aside you know six yeah. weeks just to be outside because right. all of the work will probably get done in the winter when you can't yes. go outside for you know different reasons um 
So, you know, planning that into your kind of annual cycle will be, yes. you know, beneficial and, um, yeah. I, I did have a goal and I think I've even mentioned it before. So I knew all along that at this point in the year that my sister was going to be visiting and I wanted to have this, um, knit pattern done so that I could have her try on the sample and I only have the body done. And so I'm like, I know that I didn't make my goal in that sense, but I'm also like, for the first time, I think in my life, I'm cutting myself enough slack where I'm like, you didn't get it done. There are a lot of other options. There are other ways to think about how this can still be like released on time or close to, or be acceptable. Mm -hmm. So I just have to adjust my own expectations. Like she was supposed to be like my sample model. She's a size medium. I'm also a size medium. I have like 80 other people that are a size medium. I can easily have them be the model for it. I can ship it to her or have her wait till she comes. Actually, I can't ship it to her because she's in a different country. It won't get to her. Um, I can wait till she's in this country again the next time. And I can just force her to come visit me that way also, which would be really good. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yeah, it's adjusting expectations and acceptance of stuff too for me that's like, I'm struggling with that because I really, I am happy with my level of acceptance of like the real life stuff. And like, I obviously have to feed my kid dinner. I obviously mm -hmm. have to feed myself. But like, at the same time, I'm just setting my, my knitting stuff aside too much sometimes that I'm like, I'd like to go back to it, but I, I can't figure out that balance right now. And I know it's like on a weekly thing. I think about my like life in like a weekly term typically, mainly because like at home we have a weekly calendar where we write out if my husband's got hockey, if we have what dinners we're making, and if the baby has special events or whatever. Like all of we go on a week by week basis. And I in my like Google calendar, I like block out stuff. I had I had like reoccurring meetings for like when I'd work on stuff. And I now none of it's real. And so I need to like. Mm. sit down and change them all so they actually reflect real because the seasons have changed yeah. um yeah and so i'm just trying to like it's funny you say that because like for me i'm typically booked out six weeks in advance but i, I only mean, pay attention to the next couple of days interesting and so um I know due dates like, okay, this, you know, this particular video is supposed to launch next week. What is, what is, what are the steps I can take today to get me closer to getting that done? Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's more on that day to day piece of it. Um, also just to gauge energy levels. Cause there'll be some days mm -hmm. where I'm just like totally nah, nothing's going to happen. And then another day will be, Let's go do all the things. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm within a normal range. So it's not like a manic thing. No, uh, it's just a normal. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no. And here's the thing. I think people do need to listen to their bodies more. Uh, I think like when I was much younger, I wasn't. And I had pushed myself too hard when I didn't have the energy. And then it would end up this like overtired when I would potentially should or should have energy. And I've talked about like my mental health um, a little bit, but my mental health is very much tied to my physical health and my energy levels and things like that. So like um, it's just something that I have to consider and have to be aware of when, especially when I'm not on medication of like, this is, this is life and I have to be okay with that. I think living through that has probably allowed me to accept like, Oh, okay. You're focusing on your family. You're in survival mode. Like I literally had a conversation with my husband this week and we we're like, I was like, okay, our house is a mess. Like nothing. Like if you were to look at our house, you'd probably be like, are these people okay? <laughs> but the thing is everybody got fed. We slept when we could because sometimes we were up for two hours in the middle of the night. Um, everybody had clean clothes. Everybody like had a roof over their head. Everybody had playtime. Like it was we survived. We did good. We were not like thriving. We didn't look like the perfect family and have the perfect clean house, but that wasn't the goal for this week. I think anybody with a kid under two, that, that is the expectation. 
Like yeah, anything but I more than that shouldn't be. <laughs> My time is running out of making that excuse because then she, once she's like past two, then what's my excuse? Right. Isn't that coming up soon? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm of the theory like, and this is, it's funny because if you would have asked me this, like what type of parent I wanted to be, I would have been like, oh no, my house is going to be like not immaculately clean, but like clean, right? No, I would rather go outside and play with my kid and draw chalk and go for a long mm-hmm. wandering walk then clean my kitchen if mm-hmm. that means that my kitchen doesn't look amazing that's fine with me because she even if she remembers that our kitchen was never clean i want her to rather have memories of me playing with her and having fun and actually spending time so, with her. speaking of hiring things out would <laughs> you ever do like yes. the maid stuff like i know a lot of people yeah you know have or Again, with the expectation piece, like, you know, I do all of the cooking. And so mm-hmm. I expect my workspace to be of a particular uh, cleanliness and organized yeah. in a particular way. You and I are very To good. the point where I know that that's not possible for me. I have to do all the cleaning yeah. so that I know that. It, and this is the only room that I am this way about. There's something about right, cooking. It's your domain. Well, no, but it's something specifically about Food touching surfaces and being properly prepped and cared for that um, I get a little overdone about (laughs) how things are cleaned and set up and, you know, whatever else. Um, I mean, it's my own thing. So don't come over my house. I'm just (laughs) fessing. Whatever. It's your space. Not mine. You'd be like. As long as things aren't sticky or greasy, I think that's, you know, that's fine. Like if you reach a doorknob and your hand slips, you're like, no, doorknobs, no. (laughs) Counter surfaces in the kitchen, probably. No, we usually do a pretty good job cleaning up before people come over, at least like the kitchen. So, you know, there are surfaces that people can like lean on and not be like, what the heck? We'll lean outside. (laughs) Where? We still have to get patio furniture (laughs) i digress um yeah so i do feel like i've gotten really good at understanding my values that definitely plays a role in my day-to-day um but i haven't totally figured out how there's a lot i haven't figured out in this world and i don't think anybody has it figured out we're just trying to figure it out and move along and enjoy life so That's why I'm okay with it. So how much of this is related to side projects versus work stuff too? It's not separate, right? I mean, it is, but it's not. Like the more I get at my day job, like I don't want to say sucked in, but the more more work I have to do hands-on at my day job, it the energy that it takes to do that is obviously I'm upping that game. I'm more on top of it. And then I don't have the energy left over and I'd rather, I would rather spend the energy with my kiddo. So like, I think that's where I'm tipping out. Plus I do think, okay. So given my particular niche of knitting, I am a year round knitter, but I definitely slow down in the summer because it's just like, it doesn't lend itself to like, cozying up on the couch right like in the winter or fall or even in like early spring that and having a kid i can't have a ball of yarn around that kid because she's like so at some point i'm gonna be able to sit and knit and she's gonna be able to like watch tv or play with her toys and i'm gonna be like yeah great hoping it's soon Mm -hmm. um which will help me but and I'm not the type where i'm not gonna sit on a computer when my kid's watching tv even like if my kid's watching tv i'm gonna cuddle with her and like be present with her because that's important to her. So we'll see how that changes. Um, <laughs> it probably will, but right now it's not, and I'm okay. It'll with be that. fascinating. Yeah, it, it'll there be will fascinating be, to see how. Don't it get adapts. me wrong. If I need to make dinner, I will sit her in front of a TV and I will make us dinner. Mm-hmm. Like I will use the TV as like a tool sometimes. Well, I'm so like you that. said, there's a certain amount of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have, I don't lack for like the actual energy to get stuff done or like the mental power to do it. My problem is the the frustration and the the like anger levels. My mm-hmm. ability to deal with BS 
uh, quickly goes away. <laughs> that is definitely your brand. Yeah. Um, especially if like, you know, if I haven't slept, if I haven't, you know, done anything or if yeah. everything, if, if everything I'm trying to do is hampered in some way, then, you know, I think the natural response is that, screw it. I mean, that um, is human nature. Like you, you keep hitting like blocker after blocker after blocker and you feel like you can't get a win. Of course you, mm-hmm. everyone wants to give up. It's just, it's a, I think a lot of times it is about like, accepting it and then like taking some space like you said you'd go for a walk and then coming back to it and being like and getting your mindset about it like okay i have to get this done or i have to do this or this is what i need to do in order to do the thing that i want so how do you get yourself out of the funk you know because we started out with the premise being doing all the things that are not related to the things that you want to do right so if Um, if your stated goal is to launch your, your knitting thing, um, passing this dot com, yeah, how do you, how do you get past the, okay, I've just spent five days sitting and watching TV. Um, I haven't even done that. <laughs> you know, been, with like, the kiddo the versus, house so fucking nice. <laughs> um, this is the part that I haven't figured out. I don't, I don't know. I don't have it figured out. And I think this is why I, this is one of the laundry list of reasons why I'm not super good at launching things is because like I get to a point and I know what's needed for the next steps. I know what I have to do. I know what I want to do, but there's always like, there's always going to be more things that I need to get done for my personal life or my like, whatever that I want to take precedent. So it's not the, in my head, I'm like, too, I'm like, this is, it's, I like to think about my lives and like my lives, my nine lives, my, my life in week time frame, so that I can go, okay, over the week, like uh, of the five days that I'm thinking of, I spent four doing things with my child and making extra food for some friends that are going to need it and, you know, doing some grocery shopping. And then that one day. I can bust out a bunch of things because it happens to work with the schedules better um, for my side stuff. So it's more about the summation of what the week is versus an individual day because I've had to like think about, for me, it's just like, there's a, there's a certain point where you like box up time and that's the summation of that time frame that indicates that something is quote unquote good or bad. And a day isn't a long enough time frame for me in order to, get that full understanding of if it's good or bad. Does that make any sense? Kind of. Okay. But it's so, it's far enough beyond the way that I typically think okay. that um I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Not to why don't you take a, a second here. pass. <laughs> <laughs> Not to product placement here, but if anybody's familiar with Weight Watchers, I don't do Weight Watchers, but I actually eat a lot of their recipes. They're really good now. Anyways, they give you a sprint essentially. So if you're also familiar with agile methodology, you have a number of points with Weight Watchers in a week and they do it by week that you can use up. So like on a Monday, you can have ice cream. On a Thursday, you could have more ice cream and you'll stay within that threshold of points for that entire week. And it's just a box of of time that's giving you same with sprinting. So if you had two week sprints, if you're familiar with agile methodology, there is amount of work that you're going to get done. My thinking is very similar to that. Like I want to know if something is good or bad. I'm I'm like way over generalizing, obviously, right? Like good or bad. Um, Cause obviously it's never that simple, but it's, Am I happy with my level of success for that week? And I choose a week as a time frame because in one day, the answer is always no. I'm never happy with what I accomplish in one day. But three days, five days, seven days, much more happy that I have the opportunity to get things done the way that I want to get them done. I feel like I'm confusing you more, but you are no, so familiar it, with sprinting. 
Well, and so this is my, I, I really like the agile methodology in terms of so scoping I. work. I mean, it's literally what I do for my day. But job. when it comes to actually like, you know, moving the post-it to done or whatever else, like, no, just tell me the thing that needs to be done. I'll do it. And when it's done, I'll put it in done. Like, and this is where a lot of product you know what, stand-ups get, in particular? Yeah. Like, you know, the, the scrum masters or whatever will be mad at me because, um, you know, it's like, you told me to do the thing. I'm doing the thing. I'll let you know when it's done. Leave me alone. Like, <laughs> You're really only supposed to bring it up if you have any impediments. Like, no, I know, but it's just the, you know, okay, move it to the next column. Like, no, it, I'm not going to get that nitpicky on it. I said I would do it. I'll do it. Um, You know, so that's the thing for me. Like, there's, I can't, I can't do the weak thing, like the allotted point for a week. Like, okay. I mean, that's fair. if. And this is where the different personalities come in. If I can't have ice cream, I can't have ice cream no matter what day it is. Oh, my God. And I just have to live my life that way. Oh, my because God. Because otherwise. <laughs> I could never live that way. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not have ice cream every single day or every other um, day or every three days? Honestly, I only get ice cream now if I go out and get it. I mean, like, and I go to Dairy Queen. Or I go to. Power. I mean, I think I do too. Know. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Yeah, no, but I mean, that's the that's the thing where it's like, okay, I'm making it more difficult for me to go get it. Like, I can't just walk to the fridge and you know do a quick little cheat or something, right? Like, I have, I cannot, I will not eat after six p.m. I cannot drink caffeine after 12 um i have to be regimented if i'm going to get everything done and this is this works for me i yeah. you know and and i've been accused of being overly brutal and that's fine but it works for me if it works um, for you and you're happy with it i don't think there's anything wrong with it well, i'm not if saying i'm happy about not nice. eating ice cream every day but it's <laughs> I mean, I'm sure in the long run, we live to be like 99. You'll probably be like, I'm really glad I didn't eat ice cream every day. I don't, I don't know that I want to live that long. I mean, me either, like, but that's also probably another. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just the different personality piece of it. Like it yeah. is either today or it is not. And mm. like, I will have, you know, I'll have the day where it's like, oh, crap. I had the egg sandwich and the burger. And now I'm going out with friends for dinner. Like tomorrow is oatmeal and salads, you know, and it's either all or nothing for me. Um, so again, we all have our own different yeah. things that we have to deal with. Um, but then getting back, you know, getting back into it really is the, okay. Um, I think, you know, cir circling back around in terms of like troubleshooting with my particular case, my computer um, the systems files were taking up two thirds mm -hmm. of the memory mm -hmm. and I had never run into that. And so, um, and not only that, but like my iCloud was consistently downloading and I had no idea why. Oh yeah. Um, to the point where, you know, my internet provider was like, you've used 75% of your monthly allotment. I'm like what? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Um, and so that was where I had to call and I had to, you know, go through all, all of that stuff and, and get through. And it literally was, what is the next best thing that I can do yeah. in order to get to where I say I want to get to, um, so and you were in motion and you're like, what else can I keep doing to stay in motion essentially? Yeah. And I think that's, that's probably the best summation of, of my approach to any, you know, waking moment essentially is, you know, if I stop, um, it's, I'm done. I'm similar um, to that. And like, um, okay. I'm very bizarre when I'm hungry. I have to complete all the things and I'm hungry and I'm hangry and cranky and everything, but yet I have to keep moving. I have to keep doing things. And I think it's actually like built in me as a survival thing, because like, if I were to just give up, I wouldn't eat. Right. Because I'd be like, I'm not going to go catch that lion. I'm done for. I'll just starve. Um, 
So I end up like having to really watch that. So if I notice I'm hungry and I start like leaning into everything and doing everything that I'm like, okay, I have to call it at some point. I have to actually set a timer sometimes. Like yesterday I had to set a timer and be like, when it hits 1245, you're going to eat lunch because you want to do this right now, but you really should be eating lunch. And so like, I knew that I had to stop in order to like actually take care of myself. Mm. So you know what I did to to take care of that problem in terms of like people scheduling stuff over lunch or whatever else is for like six months. I said, lunch is sacred. You're going to invite me to lunch, uh, you know, a lunch meeting. One, I will eat on camera. Oh, totally. I totally eat on camera. Two, (laughs) um, you'll provide lunch. Um, you'll provide lunch (laughs) or you'll be okay with me eating during it because you know, um, you're choosing this time when there's obviously other things, you know, that for you to be doing, um, or I'll just say no. Yeah. And after communicating that for long enough, very, very, very rarely do people invite me to anything. Um, or even like good boundary. 1130 or whatever it's just like mine was self-imposed hmm. it was literally it was my lunch break and i wanted to do something else besides eating hmm. and so i did yeah i don't know i guess i'm the it's weird i, think right? I, I was probably a dog in a past life because it's just like <laughs> it's food time <laughs> So anyway, this is a bit of, uh, this will be an interesting uh, episode to see what the reactions are. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so in terms of um, working on other things. If anybody you know, has ideas of how to get back into being motivated or things to try, I'm all ears. I would love to crowdsource some more ideas. Yeah, I'm curious to see how everybody else deals with it, too, because, again, I know I'm. I'm like so black and white when it comes to certain things. Yeah. Your ideas don't help me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I know that if I do start like talking about it, which is why you and I have continued to talk, that it helps me. And I know if I talk with other people, I get that motivation back too. But it lately hasn't been enough. Or maybe that's not the problem for me. Maybe I need to like actually sit down and critically think about more of what my problem is of why it's not probably even no. If I like sit down the five and- whys. You do that exercise, the five whys? Mm, I don't, probably, but I don't know this. what this is formally called. Why don't you tell me? Well, so this came out of another um, former colleague of ours that's in a in big company now. Um, but he would always bring it up as to, you know, okay, the uh, Washington Monument Washington Monument had a bird poop problem. Um, why? One. Okay. Well, there happened to be a lot of, you know, birds around it. So they're, you know, pooping all over it. Okay. Well, why are a lot of birds there? Yeah. Um, well, there are a lot of insects. Well, okay. So why, why is, why is the food source for all the birds, you know, at the, the monument? Well, it turns out because of the way that we're lighting monument, the bugs are attracted to the, the lights. Oh. Birds are coming to get to the thing, which means they're hanging around and they're pooping on the, the monument, which is degrading the quality of the monument, yada, yada, yada. So, like, the idea behind that, and I know I did four for any of you nitpicky, um, but just as an example, um, you know, taking yourself back that way allows like you to address. I've never done it. Of course really? he would have this exercise. Never... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, I've yeah, you work yourself it you work yourself backwards from that to then get to the underlying cause of, you know, okay, I don't want to do, you know, um, I don't want to do the social media stuff. Why? Or why? You know? Yeah. Because I'm, I like this. I'm going to do yeah. it. Cause then it's the, back. okay, I'm trolling myself. Why am I trolling myself? Because I'm afraid everybody else is going to make fun of me when I post something online. Well, why is that? Cause I've seen everybody be, you know, other people have that happen to them. Like, okay, but what happens to your life if that actually happens? Nothing. I just sit around and feel bad about myself. Well, that's right. on you. <laughs> right. That has nothing to do with the people online saying, you know, crappy things. That's on them. Yeah. You know? Um, so, you know, 
yeah, working yourself backwards uh, allows yourself to actually get closer oh, to the I real get. thing, you know, because obviously we're we're humans and we'll put up yes. our own mental blocks. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, even I find instead of just like trying to work it through in my head, like writing it down, yes. and having a, bla- a blank piece of paper so that you can, you know, trace it or, you know, actually see it in front of you. Yeah. You know, when Whether you're it's done. Or like bubbles or whatever. Mm hmm. Even if it looks stupid afterwards, it's so helpful. The process of writing something down, whether it's like on a computer or on an actual piece of paper, mm-hmm. so helpful. Okay, I'm going to do this about why I'm not motivated to like work on it. It's going to be like 80 wise probably. And I'm probably you know, going to have like excuse just... after excuse after excuse. Well, and then, okay, so then you do your project management background, right? Circle the ones that seem to be a common theme trace the dotted lines until you get to like, you know, the beautiful mind kind of room or, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the old cop shows where they have all the yeah things going back and Drinks. forth. Catching yeah. Them. Like, you know, you could, you could circle all those and be like, okay, this seems to be the major problem. You know, um, I'm eating ice cream every day, which means my blood sugar is too high, which means I feel, bleh, you know, um, I only whatever it, last night, whatever it is, you know, I yeah. know I'm harping on ice cream. I'm not anti ice cream. I love ice cream. Oh, ice cream's when, so good. Yeah. When people ask me what my definition of success is, I say eating a pint of Ben and Jerry's like a river otter on the couch. That to me. Like a river otter? You just made me think, though, of like eating Ben and Jerry's while you're sitting in a tube on the river, which sounds even better than on the couch. Exactly. That sounds so, like my dream. Like that'd be my dream day. Someone brings me ice cream while I get to sit <laughs> on the river on a floaty. <laughs> That's All right. So now that we've defined cycles. your yeah definition of success, then yes. uh, now we can work towards it. Exactly. <laughs> well, cool. Uh, I think it took us a while to get to the meat of the thing, but I think we got there eventually. Um, thanks to everybody who's hanging around and and uh, listening to this, and uh, hope you had fun. I've had fun with it at the very least. Same. Um, also, legit want to crowdsource other ways to motivate or to figure out how to motivate or what or any other exercises or ideas because I am 100% behind um, gathering information of what might work for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if, you know, if there are any other episode ideas, hit us up, social, uh, any of the social profiles, yeah, any of the questions. Um, would love to would love to do a questions episode. I think I mentioned in the previous one. You know, we have that format for, uh, you know, beginning guitar. And those are some of my favorite ones because it's, um, especially after you've, you've kind of mastered certain aspects of something, you forget what it's like to be a beginner. So yeah. having those questions, you know, being brought to you is like, oh, yeah, that yeah. is a good point. You know, <laughs> the things you take for granted um, yes. once, once you have some, some knowledge and expertise. So yeah, by all means, send them send them our way. We would, we'd love to hear from you. See you next week in the next episode. So take care.